Welcome, everyone, to the From the Shadows podcast. I am your host, Shane Grove. And before we get started with uh, this week's episode, I just want to remind everybody that uh, if you just can't get enough of the From the Shadows podcast, well, it's maybe time to go see the doctor. Anyway, if you want to actually see more of the From the Shadows podcast, go visit our website, fromtheshadowspodcast.com. There's links to all of our social media, um, our Patreon page, our uh, store where you can get a really cool From the Shadows podcast uh, t-shirt. And there's a contact button if you want to send me an email with an experience or a story that you just want to share with me. now, if you don't want to do that, though, you can find me on Instagram at Shane Grove Author. You can find me at the From the Shadows podcast, uh, Facebook Messengers uh, app, and just send me a message and I will get back to you. Um, I, I'd love to hear from you guys, especially if you've got a, a story you want to share. If you want to tell me how terrible the show is, eh, save it. Send that, to, send that to Wes or Tony Merkel. Those guys love to hear bad bad stuff so with that being said i want to i want to bring on uh our guest jonathan from pennsylvania welcome to the from the shadows podcast thanks for having me <laughs> no I'm, i it's my pleasure to have uh, to have you on because um i i think our fans our listeners are going to really love to hear about your experiences and uh, as we kind of kind of discover what happened to you and what you saw and uh, and kind of talk about. It. So we're not going to waste any time, Jonathan. I want to hear. Tell tell us what happened to you back in the day. Well, it was now a lot of people know their, their dates or whatever. Like I didn't I never remembered the date, but I know it was in 2001. I just got a new four wheeler. And. Like we have a couple of swimming holes out in the mountain. I mean, they're a couple of miles out there, you know. So, and this is before cell phones. I mean, mm. I, there might have been cell phones, but I didn't have one. Everybody, everybody used ICQ or whatever to contact. Like, hey, we're going out swimming out to the car. Wait a second, what is ICQ? What is? I what is like a message thing on the like on the internet? Like that's how you talk to people like holy smoke so i'm that much older than you i don't even know what icq is i just skipped right from a, a, do, a rotary phone to, yeah. a, to a, well okay. it was yeah it wasn't a phone it was on your like i like we had a yeah movie. like inst, like instant message instant message or something like something like that something oh. like instant messenger was after icq but uh, oh geez. But anyway, I, I heard that there was a couple like people going out swimming, so I took my four wheeler and I'm just going out, like you know what I mean. I, I, nobody was with me, and I was gonna just gonna go out there and hang out if any, because I heard there was people going out there. So I get out there, nobody's there. I hang around for a little bit, and I'm you never know. Maybe they changed went went from the '88. The 88's a quarry that everybody calls the 88 because there's a rock that sticks out at 88 feet. And people, like, only about five people ever jump off of it. But, jeez. Oh, well, nobody was there, so I started going to this other quarry, which is probably a mile and a half from this other one. So as I'm going, and I'm 17, not a good habit, but I was having a cigarette while I was putting around on my four wheeler with my helmet flipped up and I'm going down this trail and there's like a swampy area on the right. And they just did some logging out there and out of the corner of my eye, I just seen this huge thing like, and it was like running. And I, now this is all within a couple of seconds. And I seen it jump over this stack of logs and like the trail that I was on was leading around. It looked like to where this thing was running, but I didn't hesitate. I just, I like spit my cigarette out, flip my helmet down and just started taking off. I mean, I, I didn't even want to stick around to see what it was the whole way out to the road. I was just, you know what I mean? Fifth gear pinned on a four wheeler. It was like the craziest thing I ever seen, and I I didn't go in the woods for a while after that by myself anyway. 
<laughs> so, so, okay. So you're going, how fast do you think you were going when you, when you saw it? Well, it was a, a Yamaha warrior. I mean, they're not crazy fast, but I would say at least like in the fifties, 50, 60, maybe 50. I don't know. Why? And so you saw this going that fast or is that how fast no. you took off? Oh, I was, I was just putting like maybe second gear, one hand on the throttle and just, you know what I mean? Just like, you know what I mean? Not going fast at all. And, uh, you know what I mean? I, I was having a cigarette while I was, you know, riding the four wheeler, like taking a slow ride out there. But as soon as I saw that, it changed, it changed that. <laughs> so, so what about like, what was, what scared you the most? first that you thought you were alone and this was not supposed to be out there or you just i mean no, i just i mean I, I i knew it wasn't a bear because i've seen numerous bears over the years i i and this thing was like huge on two feet so i mean i it's not something i wanted to stick around like if it was a bear i would stop and you know watch it because i like watching that stuff like wildlife like walking around but this thing, I, I've just never seen anything like it. So, so at that time, okay, so two thousand and one ish. Yeah. I mean, did did Bigfoot was that what came to your mind, or or not really? what? Not until I got home and I told my mom, and she was like, "You think it was a Bigfoot?" I'm like, "I have no idea what it was. Like, I don't know." But I I tell people, my friends and stuff, they just laugh at me. They, <laughs> They think I'm making it up, but I'll tell you what, I, I I wouldn't make something like that up. Now, do you think, do you think it, it, it knew you were coming or heard you coming and that's why it was running and trying to get away? I don't know what went through my mind was because it was running towards. Now, if I, you could see it was running towards the trail that looped around. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like there was a swamp there, but in order to get around where that thing was, you have to go around this, uh, around this like U turn of like uh, pine trees, and it was actually it'd be on that side of the the swamp. That it's not like a swamp; it was just like pretty much like a deep mud puddle with like high grass and everything, you know. So it was almost like going to intersect you. You thought that's what I thought. So that's why I spun the four wheeler around. And, <laughs> started to take because it's a haul road i mean like where i live it's it's all coal territory like coal mining mm -hmm. so there's been a lot of areas like since way back in the day you know uh there's uh towns that are around here that used to be major coal towns but now they're not there anymore you can still see the foundations of the old houses because like the like, whole like the whole town is completely gone that it oh, there were, there were just numerous towns and places that they were set up just for coal miners and their families, like, I guess, from the coal companies. There yeah. were, like, houses that were right next to each other, you know? like. Uh, but I guess after they stopped mining, they moved out of the... Like, I mean, they're just... They've been there for... I don't even know. I mean, probably 1900. I don't know. Wow. So, yeah. so what... What do you remember, like, if anything, like specific about like what this thing looked like? I was about, I would say, 40 to 50 yards away from it. And I just, I mean, it, it was just big, like big, covered in hair. And I, I, I never went back to look for like prints or anything like that. But uh, I just know that. I don't know. It was just, it was, it was, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, I don't know, a big creature. And, and so when you see something like that, you know, if you know, it's not a bear, you know, it's either a monster or it's like a, it's one of the Steelers. It's one of the Pittsburgh Steeler guys out training <laughs> in, in the, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, look that from, from 50 yards, but I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> No, it was just covered in hair. Like I didn't see the face of it because it was at that angle. I'm back here and it was up further, you know, fifty yards away. 
So I didn't really like see a face, but I seen it like jumping over at that stack of logs, which I would guesstimate to be like six feet high. That's how cool. like all the freaking logs were like they were stacked up there. And it just jumped like no problem jumped. I mean, see, that's the thing. It happened so quick. Like he might've put his hand and then like did like a, like over top of him. Cause there mm-hmm. was like a rush on both sides. Ah, I don't know. I, it happened a long time ago too, but I still remember when I first saw it, like it was just, it still gives me goosebumps. I'm sure. I'm sure. So I'm curious then why why do you think your mom said Bigfoot? Like what do you, did is there something that she knew or that she had heard or she had experienced or she, I mean because well, there, there is a story with my mom, but she don't know what it was. Like we we live actually like in a town, so you would never think to see one where we live. But uh, she was washing dishes one night, and there's a window right in front of the sink. But when you walk outside, there's three steps down onto a concrete patio, which in order to look through the window, you'd have to be pretty big. Well, she said she was washing dishes one night and seeing red eyes, like looking in through her through the window. And she went over, which is like three feet over to where the kitchen door was to turn on the floodlights and like open the door she said but it she opened the door and there was nothing there but that that's not really a i mean that's what she says but but she told me that after i told her about this like she never meant that to me until i told her about what i saw well so because usually, if you do, like you said, your friends gave you a bunch of crap. Usually, if you went home and told your parents that, they'd be like, come on, what do you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But that is, I got to admit, that's kind of cool that that she had that experience and, and was open to that, for sure. Well, she's all into it. She's into that stuff. I mean, alien and Bigfoot. <laughs> You know, she did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I got to be honest. If I was just washing dishes and something looked through a window at me that was eight foot high, I'd probably be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd probably wonder, holy smokes. So, <laughs> so, okay. So you, so you get, so you make it back. You, you don't even know. Did this, did everybody go swimming at the next, at the next, <laughs> at the next one? I, I think everybody <laughs> decided not to go out. That's what it was. I mean, it's, it's just like you couldn't call somebody on your phone like, hey, where are you at? Because you have to get on your computer. And I mean, people might have had cell phones back then, but there were there was old Ericsson. I don't think I had one until I was a senior. And at this point, I was a junior, so I didn't have a phone yet. But it was just like flip phone, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so okay. So what happened then with the next experience then well that was about a couple of years later i would say probably five years later now these woods were were around there, there there was always parties like keg parties pallets like big fire music and uh Before I even get to that, though, my buddy Brian told me he was he was at this spot with this girl and uh, middle pitch dark, middle of the woods. And he he thought a deer ran into his truck. He said it felt like somebody like got the back of his tailgate and like started shaking the truck back and forth. That's what he said it felt like. But uh he said he got out. He didn't see no den or anything from something running into it. He said it was pretty weird. It freaked him out, so he left. But where I seen this this other thing, I actually shouldn't say it was a thing. I seen, like, red eyes. It was a night me and my buddy were going out to a party. And uh, now this is when Nextel's were in. I don't know if you remember Nextel with the yeah. people. So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> We, they were like walkie talk. They're like walkie talk. Yeah, like walkie talkie. Yeah, everybody had them around here. Like, 
but uh the next one it was me and my buddy jeff going out to a party and uh we get out there nobody's around so we're like texting a, or messaging a couple people on the next no like where he is at and they're like oh it got moved down to the pole line and we're like oh all right well me and him stayed there for a couple more minutes just like you know what i mean talking and uh all the lights were out in my truck uh behind us on the next mountain over is an industrial park which lights up the whole skyline from all the lights like the parking lot and the it's all uh like lowe's and wegman's and stuff mm. like that it's called high ridge park but uh i'm talking to him i had my window down no lights on so i know like the red didn't come from like my tail lights or nothing like that so as i'm talking to him speaking of smoking again i was flicking a cigarette out the window and in my rearview mirror i seen like a silhouette of shoulders a head but that's all i seen because like the rest of it was pretty dark out but i seen a silhouette of head and shoulders and two red eyes standing about 15 feet behind my truck and as we're mid-sentence talking i threw it in drive and just started flooring it like down through these trails and i just got the truck it was a 2001 silverado i mean it was used but it was like a really nice truck my buddy was like what are you doing you're gonna scratch the hell out of your truck i'm like there was something back there i don't know what it was but there was something back there with red eyes and he he starts losing it. he's like you're crazy man I'm like, I'm like i'm telling you so that was my <laughs> holy sp- now how big did it how, could you tell like how big did it did it look back there behind you well that's the thing like i couldn't really tell because it was dark and the only reason why i seen the shoulders and the head is because of the overglow of like the mountain like it, it you'd have to be there to see it. it it lights up the whole skyline so whatever it was i think had to be pretty big to be like that you can see the silhouette you know now now we kind of discussed the the red eye thing okay now do you think that its eyes were red because they were red or could have maybe that light have been reflecting off it or anything i mean i mean when you think back about it what what's what really well, that's thing that's that's why I, that's what my buddy told me he's like are you sure it wasn't I'm like, Jeff, the, the tail lights, the headlights, everything were off. The only thing that was on was my CD player, which, I mean, it was a pioneer. It had some kind of things going through it, but they were green. Like, it wouldn't have been red. Like, my, I don't know if you remember those old pioneer CD players. They had the dolphins jumping out of the water and stuff on them. And <laughs> I don't, this is like a throw. This is like, an, <laughs> like, this is like an old time show we're talking about. The, old, the good old days. <laughs> oh man, that's oh geez. Yeah. So well, what I was kind of wondering though, like you said, that light lit up over the over the mountain. Could that have been something that, in it? I I don't think so because the eyes were facing the opposite direction of the mountain, and there's nothing really to Okay. Okay. I mean it was there. Like when you're at this spot, there's no like, gotcha, light the ground up or nothing. You know what I mean? Or it doesn't shine off your truck. Like if you're out there standing behind a truck, I mean, you would just see the back of the truck. You wouldn't see like a glare in the tail lights or anything like that. I and gotcha. Pretty far away. It's probably the industrial parks. Probably two miles away on the mountain. So pretty so- so you can see it, but it's not something that's really like, you know, affecting what you're doing right there. It's but you, oh, can, you, can't, yeah. you can't see the lights. You can just see the sky lit up. Gotcha. Like, because uh, like all the industrial park, like all the buildings up there, like you can't see the actual lights. It's just the glare from coming upward, like lighting up the sky. But uh, yeah. I don't know. I have a hard time telling these stories, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look, I, here's what I, 
here's what I here's what strikes me is this sounds like an area that you could expect to see something. I mean, like I told you, I get a lot of stories from Pennsylvania, you know, Western and Northern Pennsylvania, and then Eastern Ohio, of course. And it sounds like a, like what you're describing the area, it sounds exactly where you'd expect to see like a Bigfoot if you were looking for one. So, and it sounds like you guys spent a lot of time out, you know, like here, Back in the day, we'd have bon- you'd have bonfires back in the field, and there was no mountain. But it sounds like you guys were up in oh, some yeah. rugged, rugged territory. Like, so I can't. I think you got a lot of friends who are who have some secrets that they have not told. That's what it seems like to me. Well, I do know another. He's older than me, but there was a around where I live. It's there's a, a lot of riding areas where you have to buy a permit, and people come from out of state. And it's just miles and miles and miles of ride. And it's it's kind of like Virginia, like the Hatfield McCoys, but okay. McCoys is better, but it's it's like that. But uh one of my buddies, well, I shouldn't say, I mean I know him good, but he's not like one of my buddy buddies, but uh he was crossing railroad tracks one time. He had a dirt bike, and he said as he was crossing the tracks, he looked down and he seen something real big crossing the tracks, standing on two feet. And he talk, he did the same thing as me. He took off. This was probably back in the 90s because he's he's probably he's probably like 46 or 47. I'm 40. So it was probably back in the 90s when he saw that. God, you guys are so young. You don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that's what so that's what it seems to be like you know hearing about this area it sounds like it's a place where he, if you if you had your eyes open and were paying attention you might you might see some stuff more than more than not see the thing is like we me and my buddy spent a lot of time out in the woods in our 20s even 30s but i don't really do I go out there much anymore unless it's to walk my dog but i'm always looking looking around you know <laughs> like the one day i was taking my dog this was probably a month ago taking my dog going swimming to a it's only a little spring not even a spring it's like a, it's called the the falls and it comes down and it fills up they put sandbags in there and like they let dogs swim in there and everything but when i was walking up I heard something like it sounded like something jumped out of a tree and then started taking off. I heard, but I I'm looking and I don't see anything, but I hear big sticks breaking. Like it sounded like it was 10 feet from me, but I'm like, there's no way a squirrel's making that kind of noise. Like, <laughs> like you know, it, it sounded like, like a bear, like, which I've seen a lot of bear. And that's what I thought it was at first, but I'm looking and it's, I mean, I could see right through the trees. But I hear it, but I don't see anything. So that that was a weird. I mean, I wouldn't say call that an encounter, but I mean, I don't know what it was. But so, did your dog act up at all? No, no, he was sniffing around. He didn't even. Wow, that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of strange. So, so once so, how did you know? How did this change? Like, especially the set the second time when you you know the first time how did that change your view on like thinking about bigfoot being in pennsylvania you know because i remember when i when i grew up i i'm way older than you when i grew up though you we never in a million years you thought bigfoot was in the pacific northwest and that's it okay yeah. we saw the patterson gimlin film and that was it you, you didn't think there's nothing in ohio man same thing but i so, didn't really know about that patterson footage or whatever like i didn't even know about it in 2001 like i oh, really? Know. Oh, really? I mean, hey, i've heard of bigfoot because of a monster truck like and then i'm like what's bigfoot like, you know what i mean I, yeah i don't know i mean i've heard of bigfoot but i never would have thought like i thought it was fake you know like <laughs> Well, you had to, so what, okay, so you have the first experience and your mom kind of tells you her experience. So what starts, does stuff start changing the way you're thinking about it? 
I don't know. I, I guess. What do you mean? Like, all like, stuff? like you're saying, okay, well, I thought it was just kind of fake, but now you've seen something out there and you know, there's something out there that you don't know if it's a big foot, but you know, there's something big, something could, you know, get up on a six foot pile of logs. It's in a, for, so, you know, there's something out there. How does that, how does that change your thinking about being out there, possibly not being alone and, you know, maybe finding out more information? Well, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I don't go out in the woods like a lot. I mean, I take my dog with me, but I, back when I was 17, I didn't have a carry permit. I mean, I take my gun with me every time I go. I mean, it's just, I, I see a lot of wildlife out there, but I, I've never seen anything like I did in 2001 because it was like an afternoon, like 12 noon, broad daylight. Like, like now if this happened, like, and it was like getting dark out, I, I would assume it was a bear because maybe because it's dark and I couldn't really see it that well. Yeah. But it, it's just how I saw it that day. I knew totally like right from the start that it wasn't a bear. That's what freaked me out. Like, I still, I'm freaking out goosebumps right now. <laughs> well, is there any part of you, though, that now that you have some some age to you and some wisdom, like, do you think that if you had that same sort of experience, would you maybe have waited a little bit longer and check things out? I think I would watch for a little bit just to see, like, but or try to get my phone out and get a video, but you know that's impossible. You never. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I and I think that's kind of um, I, I think that's kind of a silly, silly thing for people to say. Why don't we have better video or better yeah. picture? I mean, half the time you can't even take a good picture when you're trying to take a picture. You know yeah. what I'm saying? My wife's eyes are closed half the time. We take a picture. You know? <laughs> you yeah. Know what I'm saying? And. I mean, think about a deer crossing the road while you're driving a car. Yep. How many times could you get your phone out and take a picture of a deer as it ran across the? It's a impo- It's impossible. A little uh, bit out and put the video, like hit your camera, hit the video button. Like I mean, it's for me, it takes a little bit anyway. And you know, we're always startled. You're startled when you see a deer. Startled when anything runs out in front of you. So now add that startlement with uh, amazement if it's like an eight foot tall covered in hair thing running yeah. across the road. You, you're just going to be stunned. You know, it's going to be taking a picture is the last thing you're going to you're going to think of. And then I think I think every we're so conditioned. Everybody is now that the first thing you want to say is that's not real. That's fake. You know, instead of let's prove it's not real, prove to me that it is real. Yeah. You know, and it's with that, with everything. You know, I don't believe that because it, I don't, it's not what I want to hear. I don't believe it. Prove it to me. Instead, you know, it's like good gravy. So now, did you, did you talk to your mother about the second time that you, I mean, did you, did you go back to her? Like what I saw in the window, and I'm like, I'm like, I believe so. Yeah, two red eyes. And she was like, Oh my god, I'm telling you that. <laughs> she gets into it with me. Me and her talk about stuff. She actually did have a crazy experience back in the '70s, like not with a Bigfoot, but they, my mom and I don't know if I should bring this up or not. Alien? No? Aliens? Oh yeah, yeah. What 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 did what what did she have? Well, they were at a, I guess it was like a, a thing back then for like under, she, I think she was around 17 as well. And uh, her and five of her friends were coming back. My uncle was in a band. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? One of those places yeah. have to be 21. Yeah. And they were coming back over the mountain. It was rainy, foggy, like 
and there was a, a Mustang in front of them and they just saw them or the guy in the Mustang just start spinning the tires and trying to get out of there. And as they got a little bit further, they seen uh, this thing on the side of the road stumbling through a ditch, no clothes on with a big head. And they went right to the police station and the police, the, the cop was actually making a dick out of them. But then here the next week, she noticed the Mustang in the parking lot because she went to both tech for cosmetology. And here they find this kid. I guess he was on the way back from this show too. But he's like, yeah, I've seen the same thing. And that's why I was getting out of there. Because my mom, like I, I asked her friends about it because I, I didn't believe my mom at first. But then I asked her other friends about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, we all seen it. I'm like, holy hell. So they, so, so they thought they saw an alien. Like an actual stumbling through the ditch on the side of the road. Like, yep. <laughs> so, wow. Okay, now wait a second. Now that is a first that I've never heard. I've never heard a story of somebody actually laying eyes on just an alien out in the middle of no, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I don't know if it was an alien, but it was like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, somebody small with a really tall Big head, head. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know, but they didn't have no no clothes on or nothing. It was, it seemed like it was hurt because it was like stumbling, like, you know what I mean? Limping through the ditch. There was like a, there was a washout on the side. She said it was like two feet deep and it was like stumbling through it. But I don't know. I wasn't even born yet at then. I mean, this is a story that her, she told me and then told me who was with her. And I'd ask her friends, like not being around my mom, I'd ask her friends like, hey, my mom told me this story about like back in 77 when you were coming back from Likens. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely real. Like we all seen it. So I don't know. (laughs) Holy smokes. Holy, sp- I is your mom still around? Yeah. Oh, well, she. she <laughs> I'm not moms anymore, though. No, she's she. Yeah, she's here. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, this may I may have to call her later <laughs> and and get some <laughs> get some more details well, on this. I was telling my mom about this tonight, and I was like, maybe you could tell your story about your. And she goes. <laughs> My mom went through a, like a brain tumor and cancer and stuff. So she's like, oh, yeah, they're really going to believe me. Somebody with cancer and a brain tumor, like I had a brain tumor. And I'm like, well, I mean, you didn't have one back then. You were like 17. Well, I think it's I mean, the fact that you independently ask her friends and they all confirmed it. Yeah. Me, I mean, it means they saw something. Now, if they saw some naked dude with a big head running through that's also a great story. It's just a crazy, it's just a crazy Saturday night in Pennsylvania. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I know the difference between like a person like yeah, walking on the side of the road though, then I mean I'd probably laugh if it was a person, you know. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. Okay, so here's the thing is is I'm not sure a carload of girls might stop and get out and see if, oh, if they no. thought it was thought it was a guy but the guy you would think if you saw somebody naked and stumbling out in the middle of nowhere you'd stop and get out and ask for help or ask if they needed help if everything was okay did you have an accident or or you know what i'm saying the fact that the guy did not stick around that's because t- i don't think it was like just a big head i think the whole body like looked weird to them like it was well that's well that's well that's person. what i'm saying yeah that's what i'm saying is is i think if it was a person yeah that somebody would have said yeah stop you know, do you need help is everything okay you just don't leave somebody in yeah. that state out there wandering around at least you would think people wouldn't no, but. They said it looked unhuman that's that's why they didn't stop and they went straight to the police <laughs> station like that's they as soon as they seen it they drove straight to the police station but the cop was making pretty much making an ass out of him. So the police, the police didn't even go out and check to see if uh, it was a person. I don't think so. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> wow. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing, Jonathan. When we started this, I did not expect us to get to to get to that. That's a, I mean, that's a crazy story. I, I think yeah. it's great. I think it's great, though. I mean, I'll try to talk my mom into it. But <laughs> yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to just talk to her off the air and just hear some more details about that. That would be that would be great. That would be that would be great. But uh, um, no, hey, I appreciate appreciate you coming on and, and sharing these stories. I know you were kind of like you said, you're like uncomfortable a little bit, but yeah, um, I'm great. At these. I'm, I'm kind of nervous. That's why I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but I, listen, I think there's, I've heard enough from, from people in that same area to know there's, there's stuff out there. Um, and you know what you saw? I mean, yeah. it doesn't oh, I don't it, care what anybody thinks. I mean, I know what, I mean, what I saw with my own two eyes. I mean, unless I'm crazy, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I got. <laughs> uh, hey, listen. I think I. I don't think you're crazy. I don't think anybody's going to think you're crazy. I think those are, those were, uh, you know. And I don't blame you for being scared either time. To be honest, you know, I don't. I don't think anybody else under those circumstances is going to stick around and, uh, you know really investigate you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying too because a lot of people around here they hunt i mean these woods and it's just crazy to me that nobody like why would i see one and i don't even hunt like i never hunted in my life i was a motorhead you know like motor four wheelers dirt bikes cars trucks like i never got into hunting well that's what i'm telling you there's a lot of people out there that have some secrets that they have not shared. I would guarantee, I would guarantee that I would guarantee if you started talking nowadays to some of those people. I think they would say, well, you know, there was this one time I, I bet, I bet you'd get a couple of those. If you went back to your old group of friends for sure. You know what, though? I, I do sort of have another thing, uh, which I, I can't remember what year it was, but how I told you the quarries out there where people swim, like where there was a party out there one night, this probably had to be, I don't even know, 2008. Okay. In my one buddy, we leave, I'm taking him home and it's a Valley road. I mean, not dirt. I mean, it's Macadam and there's a hall road from the coal mining industry. Like I would say 60 yards, like through the, through the brush and then there's a haul road for a coal and one night we we're coming through and he lived probably from where we seen this it was probably another five minute drive down the road to get to his house well i have my music blast in tenant windows and all of a sudden i seen him like i felt the air because it was kind of probably colder like probably around november so I feel the air of the window down. I look over at him and he's looking out the window like like this, looking up. And I'm like, what are you doing? I, I push pause on the CD player and I'm like, I look over, I bend down to look up. And there was this, I thought it was a helicopter at first, but there was no noise. Like all I heard was my tires on the road going. I'm like, what the hell is that? And he goes, I have no idea. And then within... Two seconds after I said that, it went from real big down to a small dot and then disappeared like over I, as fast as you can. It was it was it was crazy. He was like, hurry up and get <laughs> holy smokes. I I know this all sounds made up, but I forgot. No, nah, no, I listen, I'm just I I am uh I'm just telling you, they, this part of this part of the United States in Pennsylvania and Ohio and West Virginia, there's some crazy stuff that yeah. happens. So nothing surprises me. You know, there's tons of UFO sightings, tons of Bigfoot sightings. I mean, that's just that doesn't surprise me at all. But what did how did he see it at first? Did he see it? I guess because like the hall road is on his side of the truck. And it was higher than, you know what I mean? It was probably 
from what I looked over at it, it had to be at least like 80 feet in the air. I like which. So I seen him like, you know what I mean? He was looking out like out the window like this. So I hit pause and I'm like, what do you what, what is it? And I, that's he's like, I don't know. I think a helicopter. But I, I had pause on the CD player. And the only thing we could hear is like the tires on the truck going down the road. And then all of a sudden it just took off over the mountains. It got to a small dot and then disappeared. Like, right. It had light, like not blinking lights, but it, there was a glow. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's not a helicopter. I can tell you that. No. It, <laughs> even if it was, a, even if it was a silent helicopter, it still would take off like that and disappear. Mm-hmm. So. Holy smokes. He, he'll never admit that to anybody, though. My buddy. Really? I'll be like, hey, remember that time we saw that thing? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, he doesn't want people to think. Like, so whenever I bring it up, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Look, I'm drawing a line in the sand right now. Yeah, yeah he's like, I'm not admitting that. <laughs> look, it's the story. The story's that. The story's that. I mean, look, that's and see. That is, that's the problem, okay, is there's so many people that don't want to come forward because they think people are going to think they're crazy. And that's what I'm saying is, you know, that guy saw something, you saw it with him and he won't, and won't admit it. So how many, how many people are out there that saw, have seen things that nobody was with them and just won't say a word, you know? Well, that's how I was for a while with the 2001 incident. I didn't. I only told my mom for years, but that I was only 17 at the time. But when I started, I don't know, you know, going to the bar and stuff, I'd tell like, oh, I seen this thing out here. And people would just laugh at me. Like, so I, then I just shut up because I know that, you know. Hmm. Well, I, I, guarantee, I guarantee some of those people laugh and had experiences too. I, yeah. I don't, I don't buy that for a second. So. But, uh, no, I appreciate you coming on and sharing and sharing, uh, this stuff with me. I think, and like I said, it's important for people to hear these experiences because then it makes them feel more comfortable about whether they come forward and say anything, at least in their own minds, they know they're not crazy, you know, because who wants to be made fun of for something, you know, happened, you know? So, but no, I appreciate you coming on and, um, Look, just be care- be careful out there in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> I only have a Glock 9 that I carry, so I don't know. If, I don't even know if that'll do anything. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, I don't know either. I don't know either. So make sure uh, make sure you uh, uh, stay in shape then. So you can yeah. take off. So you take, <laughs> take it. No more smoking. No yeah. more smoke. No more smoke. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, geez. All right, Jonathan. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, you know, like I said, stay safe out there. All right. No problem. I'll be watching some more of your videos tonight. I was watching the, a couple <laughs> before earlier. <laughs> well, care. hey, just be careful. It might be addictive. Rogan one of these days. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time. Never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. (laughs) God only knows what's happening.